Um, so rewire is a tool that you can help use to help you set up mock mocks for <clears throat> working with Node.js code. So we've been using HTTP backend for mocking up um, client side code. But what if we want to use Node.js and mock up server side code? Well, one solution, and there are many, um, would be to use um, convert. Um, no, to use rewire. So <clears throat> We install it, rewire here. You can see that I'm using Chai, I'm using Mocha, and I'm using rewire. So npm install rewire dash dash save. And then we load Chai. We get the expect from object out of Chai. Then we use require to load rewire. And rewire is sort of a pun, rhyming pun on require. And then instead of using require to load convert convert.js, load the code that we want to test, we instead use rewire. And what this does is it gives us the ability to set up mock objects and to see the private variables inside of convert.js. And between the two of them, we can write some pretty good tests. So if we look at convert.js, you'll see that it calls read file sync, okay? So whenever you call read file sync, two things are, are evident here. One of them is you're using file system and um, you're talking to the file, file system. And that's something you should never do in a unit test. In an integration test, yes, but in a unit test, no, because inside of unit tests, we don't, um, <clears throat> we don't rely on other resources such as the file system or a database or a network or anything like that. So what we need to do is mock up this method read file sync, which takes, in particular, it takes a parameter called file name. So over here, what we do <clears throat> is we declare a mock object, which is mocking the FS, the file system object for um, Node.js. But this time we're just mocking one method in it. We're pretending that the file system object only has one method because we only want to mock that one. If we wanted to mock other ones, such as read file or write file or write file sync, then we would add some additional functions inside of our FS mock object, but we're only mocking that one method. So here's our mock of read file sync. It takes a path and an encoding just the same way that this does. It takes the path, the file name and the encoding, and then we're just saying we want read file sync to return the contents of a text file in this case. I think you remember this file from a previous exercise. Um, it's a part of that file and it's got, it's a CSV file, just a raw text file. And we mock up that reading of that file here by simply returning it. So now when we call convert, instead of calling the re re real read file sync, it calls this one and returns this little chunk of text for us. Then we use <clears throat> rewire to set fs to fs mock. So now inside of here, when it gets fs, instead of getting the real fs, it's going to get our mock fs. So we're still actually using require but they have stubbed it out so that it now will load our mock object instead. And the place where that actually happens is here. <clears throat> so now we call in this semi-mocked version of parse CSV of our convert object. And then we call convert to JSON on it and we pass in a file name. And as you can see, the constructor here takes a file name and we initialize a private variable to um, some value. And in our first real test here, what we do is we use, once again, rewire to get that private file name. So this is something we normally couldn't do. We couldn't get it a private file name, but here we can and we get at it and then we test to make sure that it's equal to what we expected it to be. So what we're really testing there is this line of code to see if it works. Is file name really getting set to this? And probably that's a test you don't need to make, but you know, this is a common error people make, right? They're trying to set file name and they 
declare it here again, and then all of a sudden file name wouldn't have been set to what you thought. So sometimes even a dumb test like this might be worth writing, or maybe not. <clears throat> and then, and then what we do is we call convert to JSON run. And if we call convert to JSON run, we'll say that we'll see that what it does for us is it reads, it calls read file. So it's going to call this method, which will first um, call read file sync, get our data back, and then convert that data into an array. And so one of the things that we do is we have another private variable here called raw CSV, which is the raw text file that we read, the one that was set up here when we mocked it. And we want to make sure that we've actually gotten that data read. And so we check it. And my test here is just to see is its length 164 characters. It's rather unlikely that some random string would happen to be the exact same length as this string. So I make that the test to see if we were able to read the raw file in. And then the next test um, allows us to see if we're able to um, if we're able to, uh, if the length of that object that we read in is actually three items long, right? <clears throat> One thing that's worth noting here is that when I implement this, the run method, I call read file, and then I'm, then my next move is to call CS file data splice 01, which will remove the first item from the list. Because remember, the first item is just the titles, and we don't need that right now. And so we remove it. But rather than just sticking the line of code that does this into here, I actually put it in its own method. And then this serves as documentation for what's going on with Splice. Um, sometimes I find myself doing this more and more. Um, it, whenever there's a line of code that it isn't clear what it does, I put it in a method so that I know exactly what it does. And then I return C CSV file data and I check here in my test to make sure that it's equal to, um, that its length is equal to three, which is at least one valid test. And then I have another test in here, which goes out and gets the meeting names and confirms that you, you're able to pull back the meeting names, which in our case should be function kings, wayward commas, and syntax shifts. And I'll leave that part as something, just an exercise for you to play with. But the main point of this was to show you how to do this kind of stuff here. Then the other thing I want you to know how to, to understand how to use rewire was the main point of this exercise. Then the other thing I want to do is to make sure that um, I want to have this thing maximized correctly. Is to make sure that um, so here's that test to make sure that function kings and wayward commas and so on. You have to implement this get meeting names method. That's your job here on this. The other thing I want you to make sure you know how to do is to go to run, edit configurations, and set up so you can run the tests inside the IDE. So let's just make sure you got that again. We go to run, we go to edit configurations, we add a new configuration on here. We're going to make this a Mocha configuration, and we'll just call it Mocha. And then you want to... Uh, oh, this is set to a weird value, so I'll show you what you should set it to. This is the place where they're saying, well, where is Mocha installed? And of course, on our systems, we know where it's installed. It's installed um, in the NPM lib node modules Mocha folder. So you can click that. And then what directory do you want to test? And now we're in the wrong place. Um, should have done that in the opposite order. We'll go to Git. We'll go to, and there's our test directory. That's the thing we want to test, the test folder in here. And then we'll click on OK. It's this folder that we want to test, right? So now we'll go ahead and we'll run our test. And it's saying it can't find chai, 
and that's almost certainly because I haven't run npm install. And now when I run the test again, it comes back and they all pass except for the last one, which is the one you need to implement. But all the other tests pass. And you can see you can click on it and it'll take you right to the test. And this is the one that doesn't pass because it's up to you to implement. And of course, the, the, the advantage you've got here is, is that um, you can set breakpoints, right? So if we had some code here. we can now just set a breakpoint inside the IDE, right? <clears throat> and then you run with the, not with the this arrow, but with the bug arrow. And then when it runs, it'll hit the breakpoint for you. And you can uh, step through it. It's F7 and F8. So F8 will step over the method here. There, there it hit the breakpoint that time. I don't know what happened the first time. And now we're able to step over the method and look at whatever it is we want, want inside of here. We can see the different pieces of it. And you can step through your code. So that's obviously a big advantage. Okay, thanks. All right, all right that's all I wanted to say about this. Now, you have a good day. And I hope this is helpful for you, understanding how to use Rewire to set up mock tests for... Um, things that take place on the server side.